Well, okay. We may start again. And the next speaker and the last speaker of this morning session is Claudio Rafael Madu, and he speaks on the supercritical fractional diffusion equation with Hardy type drift. Please, I think it's okay. We see the screen. Okay. Yeah, and and we hear from you also. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'd like first off to thank the organizer of this meeting for inviting me here today. Uh, my name is Kojo Rafemadu from Lava University. In my presentation, I would like to report on the supercritical fractional diffusion equation with uh, Hardy Drift. This uh, result of uh, collaboration with Damian Kinzeblatov of Laval University and uh, Yuli Semenov from the University of Toronto. Okay, uh, this morning I'm going to be talking to you about this fractional diffusion equation in the critical case when alpha is equal to one and the super critical region when alpha is between zero and one. So the, the main interest of this talk concerns the head kernel of this uh, fractional diffusion equation with a drift in the critical, in the holder critical space. Let me say that this is the first result in the supercritical case with uh, non diversion zero. Non zero diversion B, the drift. Okay. So let's start, start with a preliminary discussion of the central object of this uh, presentation, the Kolmogorov operator. We notice that the standard perturbation theory does not work here. Indeed, in the critical case, the diffusion term and the drift term both have the same typical order. In the spark critical regime, the diffusion term is of lower order than the drift term. In short, in both the critical and spark critical case, the drift term cannot be considered as a perturbation of the fractional Laplace operator. As mentioned on the previous slide, the standard perturbation theory does not work. However, we have some very interesting results. First in 29, uh, Constantin and you by consider a drift in the holder critical space with uh, zero divisions, establish the holder continuity of solution of this uh, fractional diffusion equation. Uh, then we have a result of Caffarelli and Sylvester who established this holder continuity without a condition on the divergence of the drift via the geology method and the principle of comparison. Right. After all, we could also mention some results of the theory of regularity in the spa critical case, Maikawa and Miura in 2013 established the upper bound of the head kernel when the drift belonged to the holder critical space with uh, a drift of zero divisions. Concerning the two side bound on the head kernel, this was established in the paper of Menozzi and Zhang by considering a drift in the sub supercritical case. What I mean by subcritical in the case here is the case when alpha is between one and two, and the supercritical case remains the same as, as defined since the beginning of this presentation. That is alpha is between zero and one. Okay. Now let's introduce our drift here. We, we essentially work with a hard drift. So we consider a bounded drift infinity differential after the origin of the as defined as follow in the unit ball. 
it is clear that this drive belongs to the other critical space. Right. Sorry. Okay. So the main result of this presentation, we consider the drift as defined in the previous slide, and we define the operator lambda, which is the Kolmogorov operator here. Then ignoring for the moment the constriction of the head kernel, we establish a vanishing upper bound on the head kernel which show that the holder critical space contains vector field that have point irregularity strong enough to make the head kernel of vanish. Note that the order of vanishing beta depend on the constant kappa and is determined by the equation we have below. However, a natural question arises here. Is this a question resolvable or not? Well, we have a numerical solution to this uh, equation. So first, uh, let me quickly explain this graph. This graph describes the relationship between beta and kappa defined in the previous slide. We have the coefficient kappa on the vector of the vector in the S axis and beta on the Y axis. The curve shows that beta tends toward a value and does not go beyond this value when kappa tends toward infinity. So now let us make a preliminary discussion of the distinguishing method. Recently, we have a result of uh, Kinzebulatov and Semenov who established the two-sided bound of the head kernel of the Kolmogorov operator in the subcritical case when alpha is between one and two by considering a hardy tip drift. So consider this Kolmogorov operator in this case, the semi-group generated by this operator is ultra-contractive. Moreover, it's more than ultra-contractive. So the idea behind the desingularization method is to transfer the operator to a weighted space with a singular weight where the singularity of B become 10. Uh, the desingularity procedure was introduced by Mainman Smenov, who established two sides head kernel bond for the Schrodinger operator. So the fractional case presents of a completely different level of difficulty. Okay. Uh, now let's begin the construction of the head kernel. Since the standard method, the, the perturba standard perturbation theory doesn't work, doesn't work here, we will use a direct approximative agreement instead of this uh, standard perturbation theory. So we define the approximative vector field by this formula. We also require this uh, uniform convergence of B and the gradient of B. And uh, we will use also this uh, to estimate on the gradient and the divergence with the constant uh, sigma one and sigma two, independent of uh, the epsilon. So let's define the again the let's define the approximating operator in uh, space L and similar in C bounded uniform continuous. This proposition describes the construction of this semi-group. This bound L LQ will be important to us. Okay. For the proof, 
what we do, we use here a Cauchy criterion to prove the existence of this semi-group. So by stating the, the difference of the UN and UM, then this satisfies this uh, equation. So to control the these two extra terms, this one and uh, this one, we need to bound the gradient of the solution. This bound will be obtained by differentiating the equation for UM and using the vector valued inequality for Markov generator, for symmetry Markov generator. So now by we can combine the retra contractivity of the semi group plus the downfall purchase theorem. Basically, this last estimate in the previous slide. So we also, we allow us to apply downfall theorem. We obtain that our semi-group that we construed in the, is the same semi-group of integral operator. And the head kernel will be defined as the integral and kernel of the semi-group. Now, having at hand this head kernel, I should all define almost everywhere because we define as the integral kernel. So uh, this led direct, directly to my next point, the, the singularization method. Uh, let us recall that when we state the main result, we have mentioned the relationship between the constant beta and kappa. So we define this white C. We have a parameter T here. So uh, you can see that eta is a polynomial function in the neighborhood of the other region between one and two, just a continuous polynomial, and then continuous by a constant. And we will need here that eta to be twice differentiable. So let me explain where the choice of the constant beta in the definition of the weight come from. It come from this function, uh, the norm of this uh, power beta, to power beta, which is the Lyapunov function of the formal operator lambda star. If one carry out a uh, calculation formally of the formal operator and apply this to this function, we get zero. This function we will be used a little later. Okay, so uh, with the choice of the weight, we can state the weighted Nash initial estimate. Thus, the, the head kernel will satisfy this, uh, the following bound. This estimate will play a crucial role in the rest of this talk. As I had previously mentioned, the, the proof of this estimate will depend essentially of the the singularization L1, L1 bound, right there. So we are going to introduce the abstract theorem of the singularization in our case here. So we consider a general situation. So lambda is a generator of contextual semigroup in L2. The semigroup which satisfy the following bound in L1, it will satisfy also a Sobolev embedding property. And the last bound. So let me tell you that the semigroup that we consider in this talk satisfy all these property. In addition to the L1, L1 bound, it satisfy more than an estimate that I have mentioned in the previous few slides. As far as the Sobolev so property is concerned, it's hold because of the sign of the divergence of the drift. 
This is therefore the general abstract context. So we also consider a family of words that satisfy the following condition, the three condition. The verification of this property is not a big deal with our choice of the word in this talk. What will be a big deal will be a condition that take into account the semi-group and the word that I will mention in the next slide. Uh, I'm talking about this uh, blue estimate, the estimate in blue that we will call the, the singularization L1, L1 bound. Let's say that the proof of this theorem is essentially the original notch proof of diagonal bound. I won't give the proof here. Uh, the two are quite close. So uh, let me say a few words about the L1, L1 bound. First, for the operator considered in the Nash paper, the, this L1, L1 bound is trivial, which is not the case here. And this is the main difficulty. So how we are going to proceed? We will show that this weighted semi-group is a quasi quotation semi-group in L1. Thus, it will just first to show that this one is accretive in L1 for some non-negative lambda. But a direct calculation is problematic here because the operator lambda in L1 is not an algebraic sum of the fractional Laplace operator and the drift term. So we will use an approximative agreement replacing the operator lambda one by the approximative operator lambda epsilon and then replacing the weight C is by its morph approximation bounded away from zero and so that the inverse is also bounded. We overcome this difficulty by considering more a uh, Modifier defined in terms of lambda epsilon. This choice of the modification is a key step in this probe. So, let us uh, now consider the outline of this proof, the L1 L1 bond. So, we also we consider again this approximative operator using the construction of the semi group. We also define the operator lambda star, which is not necessarily the adjoint operator of the lambda, but nevertheless, we can show that this operator generates a semi-group in L1, and the kernel of the head kernel, uh, the, can, the head kernel of the operator lambda star are related by a same interchangeability of S and Y. We also define the approximating weight by this formula. So uh, the approximating weight and his inverse will be bounded. I will explain shortly the origin of this uh, regularization term. As our regularization of the weight depends on two parameters, n and epsilon, we will pass to the limit first in epsilon and then in uh, and, and this one will give us the required desingularization L1, L1 bound. So uh, this is the bound we want to prove. And we need all that. We require that the constant C1 does not depend on N and epsilon. We'll be able to pass to the limit in this estimate easily because we already have the result of the convergence of the semi-group and the result of the convergence of the weight. Here is the object we are interested in here. It is a clear trivial to show that it generates a semi-group in L2, but here we work in L1 to be able to use the Lomer philip theorem, we should check these two conditions, the condition A and B. 
The most difficult thing here is the accreditivity stuff. Uh, that is main this inequality. Because uh, we will need to make a calculation with the fractional appreciation in a way that is no longer be nice because we consider approximative of the weight. To get this estimate, we will show that the closure of curves a generator of a quasi compression semigroup in L1, first by showing that this object is dense in L1 and then the activity. Then using the loma philip theorem, is established with uh, this value of C1. So, We will use the, uh, the, fact, uh, the fact that both these two semigroups are holomorphic in L1 and Cu. That what we will do is to split this weight into two parts. One has bounded uniform and continuous and the other one in a complex spot that belong to L1 to justify the application of the fractional Laplace operator. We will simply note that this C1 belong to the domain of Laplace operator in L1. So when we apply this approximative operator lambda star to the weight, we obtain that the result will belong to the D space. Okay, uh, now to prove the accretivity, we will first introduce this notation of if and thus proceed to this calculation. Note that we use in the calculation the definition of the weight and the fact that the head kernel associated to the operator lambda epsilon star is obtained from the head kernel of the operator lambda epsilon by a same interchange of i and a. Since the modifier is defined in the term of the operator, that we can commit the modifier and this difference. Okay, uh, to summarize, we had this estimate. Uh, a same calculation allows us to bound the first term On the right, we will still have to estimate the second term that we know D2. And to do so, we just have to apply the operator to this white and do some calculation in three steps. Okay. So for we have uh, three claims. For the first claim, the result is obtained by same calculation with the use of the Lepinov function that I have introduced in the previous slide. So clearly, the, the weight lambda and the function lambda tail coincide in this bar. However, in contrast to see the Lepinov function grow at infinity. For the second claim is uh, is also obtained by uh, the same calculation with the use again of the Lyapunov function. We notice that all identities here are in the sense of distribution. The last claim give us this result. So uh, when you use claim one plus claim two plus claim three, and by the reason of the Lyapunov function, we arrive at this estimate. So since the potential V epsilon become negligible when epsilon tend to zero. 
the factor of regularization, this factor in the approximate weight will be made to control this potential B epsilon. So by taking account the estimate of D1 and D2, we arrive at this uh, inequality star. Then by using the ultra contractivity of this semi-group, we, we obtain this uh, bound. And so by using the definition of the approximate weight, we obtain this inequality. To finish, we know that since the operator is closed and the range is dense in L1, the creativity of uh, lambda plus cutage is L1 implies that the range of lambda is shown by plus cutage is in, in fact in L1. So by the Loma Philip theorem, this operator is the generator of a contention semigroup. So we obtain this bound. It's suffers to pass to the limit in this estimate in epsilon and then in N. This held our desingularization L1, L1 bound. Well, this uh, brings me to the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Madhu. And um, yeah, uh, uh, now we have some time for, for, for a short discussion or any question if, if there are. Yeah, I wonder whether some steps could be potentially simplified by using probabilistic representation of solutions in terms of subordinate for stable processes. Uh, please, you without, uh, could you repeat your question, please? Okay. Um, I, I'm wondering whether some technical steps may be simplified by using probabilistic representation of solution of fractional diffusion equation in terms of stable processes and subordinates. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't okay, okay. Uh, I think I don't take this point of view. So I I think you know it's a good expert in this field uh, that you mentioned. Minotsa is a good okay. expert. Okay, okay. 